my review of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Stars Crusader as episode 28, Anubis Part 1. So the episode begins with Jotaro and the others checking on Abdul and Kakyoin. Since Abdul's neck injury was healed, he's gonna return with the rest of the group. However, Kakyoin's gonna be out of commission for a couple of days because of his eye injury. Luckily, his eyes didn't get scratched on the pupils, so he's not gonna go blind. But this unfortunately means he's going to be out of commission probably for the majority of the season. Which kind of sucks because I like Kakyoin and I do like his stand Hierophant Green. But at least he's going to make a return. Hopefully a little bit before he, they get to Dio's mansion because I want him to at least have one individual fight in this season. At least before they get to Dio. But uh, who knows. And on the plus side, at least Abdul can now make up for the lost time, you know, after getting stabbed and shot in the head. Now, I believe the beginning scenes before the opening were a mix of filler and canon material, which I really didn't like. But while the group was going to pay the medical bill, Iggy was like outside attracting these group of women, and they are all adoring Iggy. And I think Polnareff was really jealous of Iggy because he's attracting the ladies, and for some reason Polnareff isn't. <laughs> He goes outside to warn the ladies about Iggy. Unfortunately for him, Iggy jumps on his head, chews on his hair, and starts farting on his face twice. Making a fool in front of these girls and were laughing at him, which I thought was pretty funny. Now while Jotaro and the others were traveling on this boat, we're, we see these three guys traveling with this cow and this one other guy named Chaka, who unfortunately is not on his father's good side. His father treats him like crap for some reason, I don't know why, but, but he is such an asshole towards his own son. And these other two guys, I don't know if they're like friends of the dad or if they're like his brothers or something, but uh, it doesn't really matter at this point. Now Chaka finds this sword on the ground, but before he can like do anything with it, his father picks it up and decides to see if this sword was like valuable or just a fake, not by trying to unsheath the sword, but he couldn't pull the sword out. He tries to get these other two guys to help him out too, but they couldn't pull it out. In fact, this one guy got his hand cut just by touching its sheath. So Anubis apparently can cut through anything, and it doesn't have to be unsheathed. But throughout this episode, we get to learn more about Anubis' ability. Anubis apparently has some sort of like phasing ability where it can like phase through anything, but it can still cut its target. And I think Anubis chooses who he deems worthy of wielding the sword, since Chaco is the only one that can pull it out of its sheath. But it started to do some really strange things, like. Chaka accidentally, or in this case Anubis, intentionally stabbed the father into the chest. And this one guy tried to like see if he can like do anything to help him, but the sword falls to his head, slicing almost through his head, causing him to die. Once Chaka picks it up, he hears this voice. It's the voice of Anubis telling him to calm down, that you are strong, wield me and kill. And yeah, Anubis can possess people whoever pulls out the sword out of its sheath. He can turn anyone that wields a sword into murderous killers. As Chaka, now possessed by Anubis, kills the final guy by slicing him in half. And he was hiding behind a cow, so he didn't harm the cow. Which is very surprising because, you know, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, a lot of animals do get killed. Now the gore in the scenes were censored, but to be fair, it's not as bad as like Terraform Mars or Tokyo Ghoul bad. So we cut to Jotaro and the others who arrived in a place called Kom Obo, and Polnareff was, well, he's being Polnareff. He comes across a salesman who tries to sell him papyrus, but he just tours it in half and tells him that it was fake. He was given gum by Joseph since he was complaining that he was hungry, but Iggy just pops in and just steals the gum right out of his hands. <laughs> Damn it. Iggy can be an asshole, but he's such a likable little mutt. I like him now. <laughs> God damn it. Unfortunately for Polnareff, he gets separated from the group, and we all know that whenever Polnareff goes off on his own, nothing goes well for him. As Chaka confronts Polnareff, and they begin their sword fight, which was really cool, but kind of short in a way because I was, I don't know, I was kind of expecting more from the fight, but it just ended kind of sooner than I expected. But at least we get to see Polnareff using Silver Chariot sword skills against Anubis, who was able to like attack Polnareff while he was hiding behind a pillar. However, Polnareff points out that Chaka was an amateur yet he was wielding the sword, which was very strange to him. 
So Pomerov decides to jump on top of this one pillar so that he won't be a sitting duck uh, and Chaka wouldn't be able to use those pillars to attack Polnareff. But it leaves Polnareff open and exposed as we hear this laugh go kick 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 or something like that. I don't know, but it was a very creepy laugh. Apparently when you're possessed by Anubis, you gain enhanced speed as he was at another pillar and then slices through the pillar which falls towards Polnareff and then was going to use Anubis to face through the sword and slice at Polnareff. But Polnareff uses Silver Chariot and does something I did not expect. Silver Chariot shoots out the blade of his saber, bounces off this one pillar and then hits Chaka in the neck. Yeah, apparently Silver Chariot can do that. But to be fair, Polnareff does have a reason for not using this technique all the time. It's because Silver Chariot only has one blade. If he uses that attack but his opponent's dodged, Silver Chariot would be unarmed and Polnareff would be in serious trouble. Which I can understand why he never used it in his previous fights, although I do a question why he couldn't use that against Abdul, but then again Abdul would have burned the blade, so yeah, it's understandable why he wouldn't use it. I'm still waiting for an excuse why Star Platinum never uses Star Finger again, or the fact that Joseph's Hermit Purple can't use those Ash Maps again. Seriously, those things are freaking useful! He picks up the sword and was about to unsheath it, and for a minute there, I thought he was going to be possessed by Nubis, but luckily Iggy comes in barking at him, which causes him to like um, put the sword back in its sheath. And Iggy also brings along Jotaro and the others who Polnareff tells him about his fight against Chaka. And you know, now that Chaka is free from Anubis' control, I don't know what's gonna happen to him. But there was this one scene that was really strange. There were mice carrying Anubis, so I think Anubis was trying to convince these mice to get him away. But Polnareff grabs the sword and he takes it with him. At first, I questioned why he would do that, but then again, if he did leave it there, someone else would have found it and would have been possessed by Nubis, which is understandable, but they could have at least, like, destroyed the sword or, like, chuck it somewhere that nobody would find it or, or hell, like, throw it into the Nile. They were oblivious to the sword being a stand. It never occurred to Polnareff, hell, it never even occurred to, like, Jotaro and the others that the sword might have been a stand. In fact, Iggy was like the only one that knew that Anubis was a sword stand. He knew. He was like constantly barking at the sword because he knew something was up with that sword. So yeah, Iggy, you're, you're the smartest person in the group. But because of uh, Iggy's constant barking, Polnareff decides to go and um, turn the sword to the police. But of course, Joseph uh, sends Jotaro to go with him because they can't go off alone, especially since they're in Egypt. But instead of, like, turning the sword to the police, Pornhub decides to get a haircut and a shave for some reason. Ugh! My god! Don't get me wrong, I like Pornhub, but god fucking damn it, why is he such an idiot? Anyway, uh, Jotaro falls asleep, and uh, fun fact for all you Jojo fans out there, take a good look at what magazine Jotaro was reading in the barber shop. Okay, Polnareff gives the sword to the barber, which honestly wasn't really a good idea because once the barber came back, things started to get really suspicious while he was like shaving Polnareff. And then all of a sudden you see a blade at Polnareff's neck and it was freaking Anubis who took control over the barber. And that is where the episode ends. So yeah, that is Star Wars Crusaders episode 28. Overall, I thought this episode was really good. The fight between um, Chaka, who was possessed by Anubis, and Polnareff was really good, especially with the animation and artwork. I mean, seriously, the quality went up in this episode, but the fight kind of like ended a bit quicker than I expected. But since they brought Anubis with them, Anubis is going to have a rematch against Polnareff. But since Jotaro is there, he might help out too. But here's what I don't understand. Before we saw the barber, both hands, by the way, not touching the blade. Yet, when he comes back, he has the sword in his hand. So, did he, like, right after he shaved Polnareff a bit, he came back to the sword and unsheathed it or something? Or did Anubis use his hypnotism ability to call upon um, the, the, the barber to pull him out of his sheath or something? I, I honestly have no idea, but I'm gonna assume that happens. As for my first impressions on Anubis, I like the stand. I think the stand is pretty tough. I mean, it did give Polnareff a hard time a bit, but I think he'll give an even harder time to Polnareff 
and Jotaro since he's also there. However, the preview of the episode it does not show a lot of what's gonna happen, but it looks like we're gonna get a continuation on Anubis versus Polar. Now for the voice acting, Anri Katsu voiced Chaka, who has voiced Daidara from Akamega Kill, Kageyama and that one announcer guy from the Fairy Tale anime series, Drosel Kanes from Black Butler, and Niall, the chief of the military police from Shingeki no Kyojin. The voice actor for Anubis is Yasunori Matsumoto, who has also voiced Alejandro Corner from Mobile Suit Gundam 00, Wataru Akiyama from Initial D, Jean Havoc from the first Full Metal Alchemist anime, Gori Gabri from Slayers, and Toya from Yu Hakusho. So yeah, overall I thought this episode was really good. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing more of Anubis and a continuation of his fight against Polar Ref. It's definitely something I'm looking forward to. So if you want to check out the episode yourself, it's out on Crunchyroll. I'll leave a link in the description down below. And tell me guys, what did you think of this week's episode of Star Wars Crusaders? Did you like it? Did you hate it? What are your thoughts so far are on the stand Anubis? This Anubis is definitely very interesting and a very tough opponent, yet the stand is very mysterious. I mean, we've seen Anubis possess people, but we haven't seen his original stand user. So the question is, where is Anubis's original stand user? I mean, is Anubis like an automatic type stand? Like, uh, like with cameo stand judgments? Well, we'll just have to wait and see until next week's episode. Let me know about your thoughts on the comments down below. Like the video if you liked it and subscribe to more videos. And be sure to check out my Facebook fan page and Google Plus. So yeah, that is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stars Crusaders episode 28. I'm Lunar Spawn 27 and I'll see you guys later. Bye.